Hi there! Welcome to another new video from F1 News. The Miami GP weekend is over and it's time to take a look back at the performance of the teams. In this video, we are going to talk about the conflict that has arisen between Perez and his Red Bull team. Sergio Perez narrowly missed the podium at the Miami Grand Prix. The Red Bull driver failed to overtake Carlos Sainz. He explains that it was partly due to a problem with the RB18. I'm done with it, was a clear statement he made after the race. What are the consequences of this? Watch the video, but before you do that, subscribe to our channel first. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Done? Then let's get started. Sergio Perez finished the Miami Grand Prix in the same place as he had started. The Red Bull driver came in fourth while teammate Max Verstappen overtook both Ferrari racers and won the race. Painful for Perez because his expectations were a lot bigger. Perez still had a moment well view of the stage, but even after a safety car and a fresh set of rubber came, he did not pass the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. This hurt him, and it showed. Because earlier in the race, he didn't succeed either. The gap between Sainz and Perez became taller once the issues got with his car. He let it be known over the onboard radio that he was losing power, something that was immediately reflected in his lap times. After the race, he said what was going on. You know, even with the DRS, I couldn't get around Carlos. The loss on the straight pieces was too big and I tried to push hard to stay with him on the corners. Finally, he put in an overtake, but Perez braked too hard. I went for it, but I was on the dirty line. After that, I didn't come close anymore because the loss was too big. I think I would have had a good run with a normal engine, says Perez about the problems at RB18. I think it's a sensor problem. Everything worked fine at first, but the sensor problem made me lose 7 seconds in 2 laps. Then it was just a mediocre race. We have to keep working hard because every time there are different problems like this one, said Perez. I mean, we are lucky to finish the race. At one point, we were very close to retirement. So to make it to the finish anyway, that's good, puts the Red Bull driver into perspective, who eventually scored important points for his team. The gap between Ferrari and Red Bull in the constructors' standings had shrunk to just six points, partly due to Perez. It was again a setback for Red Bull in terms of reliability. In the first Grand Prix of the season in Bahrain, the Austrians suffered a double retirement and in Australia, teammate Max Verstappen had to park the RB18 next to the track. According to Perez, Red Bull is not only hit by accident, but it also needs to work hard to better understand the current problems. We have to keep working really hard, because every time we run into different problems, Perez continues. Verstappen shares his teammate's opinion and states that Red Bull still has a lot of work to do. Although Perez's pace recovered after the initial loss of time, the power was not the same. The Mexican says he missed 10 kilometers per hour on the straight. Red Bull's team principal says it was an unfortunate situation for his driver, who cost him 30 PK. Without that problem, he might have finished second, said Christian Horner. With this, Horner acknowledges that the problems with the car once again cost Red Bull a podium place. Although Verstappen has regained his spotlight well, Perez remains full of emotion. His statement speaks for itself. He is very disappointed and indicates that there would be much more in it if he was not confronted with the failure of his car. Various media say that Perez had a major confrontation with his Red Bull team after the game. Although the revelry for Max Verstappen had the upper hand, Perez's frustration turned out to be too big. How much pressure could Perez put on his team? We wonder. And while there is so much focus on constantly improving the Red Bull cars, it turns out not to be enough. Here too, Mattia Binotto, team principal Ferrari, had an opinion on this after the race. Binotto thinks that Red Bull has to be aggressive with the development budget in the early stages of the season. The victory for Verstappen in Miami and the victory two weeks ago in Amola give a clear indication that Red Bull has taken a lead in the development battle. Ferrari had a clear margin against the other teams in the first phase of the season. The Ferrari team has so far not come up with major updates to improve the car, but believes it needs to look at the longer term. In theory, the team should pay the price for that at the end of this season, something Adrian Newey referred to earlier this year. 
According to Benotto, it is in any case an explanation for the turnaround in speed between the two teams. He thinks that Red Bull's lead could disappear again if Ferrari starts presenting its real major upgrades. Red Bull has indeed improved the car quite a bit since the start of the season. They have come up with updates, states Benotto. Looking at the last two races, they might have won a few tenths of a lap over us. I have no doubts that we will need to come up with updates to keep up with that pace. I hope also, because we are dealing with the budget cap, that Red Bull will stop developing at some point. Otherwise, I don't understand how they can do that. Ferrari will come up with the first major package to improve F175 during the Spanish Grand Prix. Red Bull has already applied many of those changes at Imola. It will immediately become an important indicator, says Benotto. In the coming races, it will be our turn to develop the car as best we can. We will come with updates, he admits. It's no surprise that we came to Barcelona with a package that is very important to us. As always, we are trying to bring a big package. If it works as expected, we can close our gap to Red Bull again. Then back to Perez. So you could conclude that Red Bull has made huge investments and made upgrades that should have made a podium finish achievable for both drivers. When asked if victory was possible after his switch to mediums, Perez replies, with a normally running engine, this was possible. We saw earlier this season that Perez struggles to turn the switch in the face of setbacks at the Bahrain Grand Prix. His disappointment was so great that he struggled to look positively at the rest of the season. It's important to get those points in the first race, Sergio Perez sighs after the race. It was a dramatic day for Red Bull, where both drivers retired due to engine problems. I already felt the power drop. We are disappointed, Perez told Via Play. Things like this can be a blow. This is racing, the Mexican puts it into perspective. But this is difficult to process. We had the podium in the pocket, but it's a tough day for the team. It's important to get those points in the first race, but unfortunately, we didn't get them. His confidence after Italy seemed to be restored. Max Verstappen had the same difficult start, but seemed to have hope. It's a shame, but we are a great team. I believe in this team, and I am convinced that we will solve this, said Verstappen in one of the retirements. And that hope seemed valid for this weekend. Can Perez also get his vibe back? Or will he be considering his future plans at Red Bull from Max's shadowy spot? He previously raced in Formula One for Sauber, 2011 to 2012, McLaren, 2013, Force India, 2014 to 2018, and Racing Point, 2019 to 2020. GP season 2021, Perez extended his contract with Red Bull. He then said, I am very happy to move forward with a great team like Red Bull into the new era of Formula One, and it is a great opportunity for me. Everyone will start from scratch next year with the new regulations, so my only goal is to go all the way to the top with Red Bull. It always takes time to get everything under control when you join a new team, but I really enjoy being part of the Red Bull family. We've worked hard to get results, so it's great to see the team have confidence in me for the future. How much time will Perez give the team? And is that top still achievable for him? We'd love to hear your opinion. Share it in the comment box down below, and please keep it respectful. Thanks for watching this video from F1 News. We look forward to seeing you again next time.